Hello, I'm neurologist and I work in MS for the last seven years. I look after patients nonstop daily. That's my clinical work. That's what I do day to day. Hello and welcome to Be Well with MS podcast. In today's episode, we will be exploring the question of whether multiple sclerosis or MS is curable. We will dwell into the role of immune cells in MS and explain how MS drugs work in the body. Think of immune cells as soldiers in your body, always ready to protect you. But what happens when they start attacking your own body? That's what happens in MS and we will explain how this process unfolds. To understand MS, we first need to understand how our immune system works. Immune systems are like the soldiers in our body, always on the lookout for any foreign invaders. These cells can be divided into two main types, T cells and B cells. T cells are like the generals, giving orders to the immune cells and directing them to the right place. B cells, on the other hand, are like a foot soldiers responsible for producing antibodies that can attack invaders. In MS, the immune system mistakenly attacks the protective coating around nerve fibers called myelin. This coating helps messages from the brain travel down the nerves and the rest of the body. When myelin is damaged, these messages can be disrupted, causing a range of symptoms including numbness, tingling, weakness, visual problems, bladder problems, fatigue, etc. etc. Now, how the drugs that target B cells, and everyone now is talking about the B cell therapy and it's on the agenda for any conference that you're you're able to tune in or listen on the podcast or read the blogs and logs uh, written by the professors in multiple sclerosis. Everyone these days talks about the B cells. So B cells play a crucial role in MS, producing antibodies that attack myelin. As a result, many of the drugs used to treat MS targets B cells. These drugs are called anti-CD20 therapies. They are usually labeled as uh, rituximab, ocrelizumab, ofatumumab. They work by depleting B cells in the body. Imagine a fortress with a lot of foot soldiers defending it. Anti-CD20 therapies are like a bomb that targets those foot soldiers, leaving the fortress vulnerable to attack. One example of anti-CD20 therapy is Acrevis. This drug has been shown to reduce the number of the relapses in multiple sclerosis and slow down the progression of the disease by depleting B cells. Acrevis can, can help protect the myelin coating around the nerve fibers. The limitation of the anti-CD20 therapies while anti-CD20 therapies that I just listed, Kisimta, Fatunumab, in other words, or, or Ocrevus, Ocrelizumab, or Rituximab in some countries are being used, are effective at reducing relapses, slowing down disease progression. They do have some limitations. One of these is the risk of infections, as B cells play an important role in fighting off infections. Another limitation is that these drugs may not be effective in targeting smoldering MS. You probably heard about this definition, um, which is uh, an ongoing inflammation within the brain without necessarily identifying the clear new lesions or relapses, which can continue even when there are no visible signs of disease activity. The smoldering MS is a hot topic, and we will deliver the new podcast about this too. So... What's then looking to the future? What combining B-cell and T-cell therapies might going to look like? As we learn more about the role of immune cells in MS, we are developing new treatments that target not just B-cells, but also T-cells. T-cells are like the generals of the immune system directing other immune cells to, to the right place. By targeting both B-cells and T-cells, we can potentially achieve better outcomes in managing MS. One new class of drugs that target both B cells and T cells are called Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors, BTK inhibitors. These drugs can penetrate the central nervous system and potentially purge the body of latent Epstein Barr virus, which may be a trigger for multiple sclerosis. Moving on to the topic of advanced MS drugs, it's important to understand how they work in the body. We've talked about how B cells play 
a role in MS. But what about T cells? T cells are another type of immune cells that can attack myelin in the brain and spinal cord, leading to MS symptoms. Think of T cells like military force that is sent to fight off invaders in the body. In MS, these T cells mistakenly attack the myelin, causing damage. So how do advanced MS drugs target T cells? One type of advanced MS drug is called a S1P modulator. These drugs work by trapping T cells in the lymph nodes, preventing them from reaching the brain and causing damage to the myelin. And the examples of these drugs are fingolimod, saponimod, pornesimod, medicine. So this class of drugs, they trap T cells in the lymph nodes, preventing from reaching the brain and causing damage to the myelin. There are other drugs that I would like to list, such as natalizumab or Tysabri. This drug works by blocking T cells from entering the central nervous system. It's like putting up a barrier that prevents security guards from reaching the concert goers and causing harm to the performance. That's an analogy I would like to use. The other one is Tecfidera dimethylfumarate. This medication acts by reducing inflammation and protecting nerve cells from damage. It's like providing the security team with better communication tools and strategies that they can respond to potential threats more effectively and without harming the guests. Now, a teriflunamide, or Baggio, this drug works by inhibiting the rapid growth and reproduction of immune cells, including T cells and B cells. It's like reducing the number of security personnel at the concert, making it less, li less likely for innocent fans to be harmed. Another one, uh, it's injectable. It's called glatiramer acetate, copaxone in other words. This medication helps modify the immune system's response to myelin, the protective coating around nerve fibers that is damaged in multiple sclerosis. It's like training the security team to better recognize and protect the concert goers rather than mistakenly treating them as, a, as threats. Interferon beta. Uh, it's under the name, could be as betaseron, Abonex, Rebith, Plegridi. These drugs work by modulating the immune system, reducing inflammation and slowing down the progression of MS. It's like providing the security team with ongoing coaching and support to ensure they are keeping the concert safe without harming their fans. And there is another category of, of the drugs, uh, such as cladribin, is induction therapy, is irreversible. Once it's in your system, it cannot be easily washed out. Um, this medication selectively reduces the number of B cells and T cells that contributes to MS-related inflammation and damage. It's like recognizing the security team to focus on the most essential tasks and minimize the risk of harm to the concert goers. I hope this is clear for you, uh, how these drugs work in, um, in our bodies. And you probably recognize some of, you, of them. You, you are already on these medicine and you know now how it works in your body. Now, the most important question, and every time I have a patient in front of me, and particularly newly diagnosed patient, they ask this very important, crucial question. Is MS curable these days? Unfortunately, there is no cure for MS yet, but there are many innovative ways to manage MS with up-to-date treatments. By understanding the immune system and how it interacts with MS, we can use new drugs to manage the symptoms and the activity of MS and prevent further damage to the myelin coating. If to believe the theory that EBV virus, which is a kissing disease or glandular fever virus, if it is a cause of MS, to better understand this, think of EBV like a theft that breaks into a factory and takes it over. If we can eliminate the theft and regain control of the factory, then we can stop the harmful antibodies from being produced and cure MS. This is why there is so much excitement around the BTK inhibitors as a treatment, which is not still available, but it's coming. 
which can in inhibit and purge the EBV-infected B cells. While B cell therapies may not cure MS currently, they may play an important role in the future of MS treatment. As we wrap up this discussion on advanced MS drugs, let's take a look at the future of MS treatment. Think of the future of MS treatment like a puzzle, which each new drug and treatment option adding another piece of the puzzle. With more pieces, we can start to see the bigger picture of how MS work and how we can best treat it. One exciting area of research is personalized medicine, where treatments are tailored to the individual patient based on their specific MS subtype and characteristics. Another area of research is com combination therapies where multiple drugs are used together to target different aspects of MS, whether it's inflammation, whether it's a smoldering uh, lesions, whether it's remyelinating agents that are going to be used in the near future. They are st still under the research at the moment. As we continue to learn more about the immune system and MS, we can develop more effective treatments and eventually, hopefully, find a cure for this complex and challenging disease. Thank you for joining me on this episode with Be Well With MS and Innovative Ways of Treating or Managing MS. We hope that this discussion on advanced MS drugs has helped you better understand how these treatments work and how they fit into the larger picture of MS treatment. Remember, while MS can be a challenging disease to manage, there is hope for a brighter future with more effective treatments and potentially even a cure. Stay positive, stay informed and stay connected with the MS community. Thank you and we will see you next time on Be Well with MS podcast. Bye for now.